The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers that were seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body, Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe in the scripture that the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about his human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. In the interchange in the gospel between Jesus and the Jews, there's some confusion about what is the temple. Um, The Jews are thinking just about the building itself, the temple of Jerusalem. Certainly right that that's the temple. It's fine to think about that temple. Jesus is speaking of the temple of his body, as St. John writes and tells us in his gospel. And Jesus is right as well. Both of them are correct. The temple is basically a place where God dwells. It's basically a house of God then both the Jews and Jesus are correct. The building itself was God's dwelling place, and certainly Christ's body is God's dwelling place too. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 6, verse 19, St. Paul tells us, tells the Christians, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So we have also not just the body of Christ and the building of the temple of Jerusalem or even this church building as a temple, but your body as well is a temple. It is a place where God dwells. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you and inside of me. And so in the gospel today, Jesus sees people selling animals. He sees people exchanging money. And he cleanses the temple of those things, saying, My father's house, the temple, God's dwelling place, is not a marketplace, but rather a place of prayer. Maybe um, if Jesus cleansed the physical Jerusalem temple, and he speaks about the temple of his body and St. Paul speaks about the temple that is our body. Maybe one of the challenges from the gospel today for you and for me is also to cleanse the temple. Temple of our body, but maybe the temple of our mind and of our heart. And maybe to cleanse our mind and heart of the same things from which Jesus cleansed the temple of Jerusalem. Same things. Maybe too much attachment to things, too much attachment to, to money, to those things. I think the um, economic times in which we find ourselves, you may already started doing this in some ways, considering what is essential in life, what is necessary, versus what was a luxury or what would be nice or what's a, a want in your life. Bishop Barnes spoke to us at the town hall meeting for those who were there last weekend. He spoke a little bit about what to look for during difficult economic times, things to watch out for in your own household and in the household of others. Because difficult financial times put a greater stress on families, undoubtedly. You may have already been experiencing that. 
So usually, difficult financial times see a spike in domestic violence, um, taking out anger towards one another on your spouse or even on the children. So violence in the home tends to increase during difficult financial times, something for you to watch out for. Certainly, I think there's a great um, desire for husbands and wives to want to work hard, to provide for their families, to pay a mortgage, to put a roof over their heads, food on the table, and clothing on the back of your children. Sometimes um, our self-worth is more tied to our job and what we do, to what we own or don't own, rather than to who we are. And sometimes it's easy to take out our anger at the economy, at my boss, at the loss of my job or the loss of my home. Sometimes it's easier to take that anger out on those who are weaker.